Welcome back to TEC Tube. I'm Vince Sylvester along with Ryan Hoger. Today we're going to continue on with our Evolution Infinity series. So you just installed your Evolution Infinity furnace and now it's time to optimize the furnace. Yeah, so we've set up all the other configuration settings on the AC and the regular thermostat settings. Now we need to go into the furnace section and configure that for the proper air flows and things like that. So here we are inside the service setup screens. So we're going to go under setup in this case, and then we're going to go underneath furnace on our infinity or evolution stat. So we'll walk through each one of these settings and explain what they do for you. The first one is gas heat airflow. So there's two settings in there. One is gas heat flow, comfort versus efficiency, and one is low heat rise on and off. I'll be honest with you. I always forget which one comfort is and which one efficiency is. If you hit the little information button, it'll actually tell you what those things do. And it says specifically, comfort provides lower air flows. Efficiency is higher air flows. So if I need more air flow, perhaps to get air to the longest run on the duct, I can go to the efficiency mode and I'll get more CFM coming out of this unit. The low heat rise is similar. It's called low heat rise because it's intended to be used with a bypass humidifier. So if you have a bypass humidifier, you will turn that feature on. Or if you just want to get more air flow in general, and this efficiency setting wasn't getting you quite enough, you can turn that on as well. So it's kind of counterintuitive, but green and then red means the least amount of airflow. That's a little bit more, and that's the most still. All right, so the next choice on here is AC and heat pump airflow. Now we probably talked about that when we were doing the AC video. We'll talk about it again because the blower motor that's used for AC is inside the furnace. So that's why you see that setting here on the furnace side. So in this case, there's actually three columns of information on here. There's cooling, heat pump, and dehumidify. Most units won't have that middle column for the heat pump. In our case, it's there just because we happen to be connected to a heat pump. Under cooling, you have typically five choices. You have one that's called quiet, which is about 275 to 300 CFM per ton. You have comfort, which is the most common. It's the default choice and also enables some features I'll talk about in a minute. It's about 300 to 325 CFM per ton. You have efficiency 325, which is a fixed 325 CFM per ton. You have efficiency 350, which is 350 per ton, and you have max, which is 400 CFM per ton. All right, we're going to leave ours on comfort in this case. The only time you'd want to increase that is if you can't get enough air out the furthest run on the duct, then you might have to increase that to get the CFM you need for those faraway zones. Uh, similar choices you'd have on a heat pump. Dehumidify is the more interesting one. Normal would be the default setting for this, but you can switch it to high. I generally would say you would not want to do that. Uh, we talked about it in the AC video, but you might do that if you had ductwork sweating in an attic and the customer was unwilling to forego the cost to insulate the ductwork properly. You might come over here and increase it to high to reduce the amount of sweat. The third choice on here is gas heat staging. So I'll go ahead and click on that one. Uh, so what this does is allow me to decide what is specifically going to control my stages of heating and cooling. The default is system, and I would highly recommend you leave it on that. System means thermostat. The thermostat chooses how many stages of heating that we're going to actually operate in this case. So whether it's a two-stage, a three-stage, or a fully modulating furnace, the thermostat is most equipped to make that decision. He knows the current temperature set point. He knows the, temp the temperature that, you're, that you currently have and what you're trying to get to. So he's going to be able to ramp this thing up and down to get us to that exact point. If you want, you can adjust this to say furnace, and that means the furnace controls the staging and not the thermostat. I wouldn't recommend this. That setting's there. I'm just explaining it so you know it's there, but I would not utilize it. The furnace then uses its time delay algorithm to decide when to put the next stage on. I'd recommend you let the thermostat make the choice. You also could lock this unit in low fire only or in high fire only. And some of the three stage ones even have more choices like low and medium, medium and high, so forth. The low side, you probably wouldn't use these, but if you ever did, maybe if the furnace was oversized, and by that I mean grossly oversized to the point where it's tripping on limit, it's way too big for the duct system. You might come in here and lock it at a low fire only so it never goes to the highest fire capacity. The reverse of that would be locking it into high fire. So what that would mean is that we are never going to go into the lower stages. It's always going to run at 100% capacity. You wouldn't use that normally either, but every once in a while you get someone who liked it when their old furnace blasted on and cooked them and then turned off and then blasted on. We can go back to that if they really want to. It defeats the purpose of buying a modulating furnace, which should operate nice and smooth. But if they want to blast it on and off, we could do that if they need to. Fourth choice on here is modulation limit. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. There's a minimum and a maximum. So this is a modulating gas valve that goes from 40 to 100% in 1% increments. If I wanna trim off the bottom half of that range, it'd be only go from 50 to 100, 
or if I want to trip off, trim off the top half of the range and only go up to 80 or 90%, I can do that. It is a little bit weird. Instead of telling it what percent I want to lock it at, I tell it what CFM airflow I lock it at. And unfortunately it goes in one CFM increments, but I can tell it I have a certain minimum CFM, which will correlate to a certain gas flow. And on the opposite side, I can lock it at a certain maximum CFM so it never goes to the highest fire. I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel and go back onto that screen. If I scroll down, I'll get the second page of menu choices. The next one there is gas heat off delay. The default is 120 seconds. That is probably fine for most applications. You can adjust this. The lowest is 90 seconds. The highest is 180 seconds in 30 second increments. What that does is after a heating cycle is concluded, it'll continue to run the blower to run airflow across the heat exchanger, but it'll shut off the inducer fan. So we only have airflow going on one side of the heat exchanger. So that means any residual heat in the heat exchanger will then be pushed down the duct system instead of being allowed to drift out of the exhaust system. It saves a little bit of energy. I'm gonna hit cancel and go back on that one. The next one is altitude. Guys, I live in Illinois. I don't even know what to tell you on this, but if you happen to be out of state, this is where you'd come and make adjustments here. I'm in the Chicago area. If I wanna be super anal one day, I can move it from the default of 800 down to 600, right? If you guys are in Denver or something, lots of adjustments for you, but you put in your specific uh, altitude and stuff in here and you'll get more accurate uh, pressure control on your gas side. I'm gonna back out of there. Below that is dehumidification drain. This is related to cooling, but because this happens to be, uh, the blower of the furnace happens to be used for cooling, that's why you see it here in the furnace settings. The default is normally 15 minutes. You can see that we adjusted this one to 10 previously. It does go down to five and it goes up even higher than that. I would recommend 10 minutes for the Midwestern climate zone. What this does is after a cooling call is over, it shuts the blower off and keeps it off for this many minutes, right? And the reason we do that is we don't want any moisture that's on the evaporator coil to have a chance to re-evaporate into the airstream and make our house more humid. So we leave the fan off for X amount of minutes, in my example, 10 minutes, and that'll allow us to let that coil drain off and not pull that moisture back into the home. I'm gonna back out of there one screen. The next one is the G-terminal. This is my new favorite feature of this thermostat. I say new, it's a couple years old, but I like it a lot. If I tell it, yes, I have a G-terminal. Now, if you recall, we're not wiring the normal thermostat wiring to this controller. We're wiring a communication cable, A and B wire, and 24 volt power, C and D. That means the G terminal input, which is normally used for the fan on the furnace circuit board, that terminal input is being used for nothing. So the manufacturer, in this case, Carrier and Bryant, allowed us to use that terminal for something else. There's three something else that I can pick. The first one is fan. So if I have something wired to this G terminal, then I can have it set up to go in low, medium, or high speed. Whenever something hits that G terminal, it's gonna run in that low, medium, or high speed that we just selected on here. So I don't know, um, maybe grandma wants to have a switch on the wall in the dining room, and whenever the family comes over for Thanksgiving, grandma wants to flip that switch, and this thing goes to high fire on airflow no matter what. Fine, grandma can have it, we can do it. Set it for fan, set it for high, this blower will go to high speed whenever she flips that switch. All right? or maybe you wanna interlock it to a steam humidifier or something like that. The humidifier hits the contact, we turn the blower on to help move that steam down the duct system. The last one on here is shutdown. And you can pick whether it's normally open or normally closed contact. Shutdown would be used for an emergency situation. So you could have a condensate overflow switch. You could have a duct mounted smoke detector, right? So if I sense smoke in your duct, there's no reason for me to continue to operate the blower and distribute that smoke all around the house so your whole family can get it, right? I wanna shut the blower off. So the duct smoke detector detects the smoke, we shut the fan off. On commercial systems, 2000 CFM and up, that's required by code in most places. But residentially, there's no code for that, but you could still optionally install a duct smoke detector in the system and you can wire it here to shut this system down. The third one, or the second one I should say, is labeled as alert. Once again, normally closed or normally open on the contacts. What the alert does is allows me to accept a miscellaneous signal from anything that I want and it has no effect whatsoever on what I do with the blower. The blower doesn't turn on, doesn't shut off, it just does its normal thing but that alert can then be sent out as an email alarm or text message alarm to someone, right? So I'm gonna keep it on alert for right now, I'm gonna save it. And when I do that and scroll down, I have one more setting under the furnace that we could talk about. It's called G terminal alert label. By default, it says auxiliary input alert, which means pretty much nothing to anybody. So you wanna come in here and custom name that. You can click on it, a little keyboard pops up, type in whatever you want, right? And then hit next and save it. You can label it whatever you want. So in my example, the duct smoke detector, you can write smoke was detected in your duct system 
or something like that. Or you could put in one of those, uh, those little hockey puck uh, sensors that go on your floor by your water heater to detect a water leak, right? If that detects a water leak, it could wire back to my furnace, which is where that terminal is, which communicates to my thermostat, which then emails me to say, hey, by the way, your water heater is leaking. So I can make that message say water heater leak or basement flooded or emergency generator or something like that. Anything that I want, any contact I can accept on there. So I'm gonna hit cancel on that. I don't wanna change the label in this case. And then I'm pretty much done with my furnace configuration settings. Well, Vince, that wraps up our series on the Infinity Evolution controller. Uh, if you guys haven't seen the previous videos in this series, please go back and take a look at them. And thanks again for watching our videos. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe at the bottom so you can see all of the future content we have for you. Thanks and have a great day.